What's going on internet? IG back again today. Today, following up from the video of why Manjaro is so popular, let's take a look back in time over some of the biggest, in my opinion, releases of Ubuntu. To tackle that same question, what is it about Ubuntu that made it so darn popular? So I'm really looking forward to this video. It's going to be a fantastic trip down memory lane. And uh, for those of you who uh, maybe have only started using Linux in the last uh, couple of years, it'll be a fun little bit of a history lesson. And for the rest of us, it'll just be a great nostalgia trip of what using Ubuntu was like back in the day, back when it was the underdog, back when it was... Uh, anyway, so... The fascinating thing about Ubuntu is that um, this distribution was really filling a, 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 a quite a big void in the uh, in the Linux world when it came out. So the first release that ever came out of Ubuntu was in 2004. The world was a very different place in 2004. Uh, this release that I have showing now is a, uh, Ubuntu 8.04. So this one came out in 2008. It had four years of maturing as a project and, uh, and this was uh, the long-term support release of Ubuntu. Now, the funny thing is, is that um, unfortunately, um, basically, uh, unless there are some other servers out there that are still hosting the packages for, um, for Ubuntu, um, I don't think you can connect to the servers anymore to be able to, to be able to down. Oh no, wait, I take it back. Wait a minute. Nope, you can't. So uh, at least in the Australian server is, uh, is you can't download apps anymore, but it is fascinating to see what Linux looked like back in the day. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna jump through, um, we're gonna jump through four releases of Ubuntu that I think are representative of change. The last of those being the beta for Ubuntu 18.10 that just came out recently. And as we go, I'm going to point out some of the things that uh, that contributed to Ubuntu's climb in popularity. So first of all, with Ubuntu 8.04, this was, it's hard to believe, a whole 10 years ago. This was uh, 10 years ago. This is what uh, Ubuntu looked like. Uh, it was based on GNOME 2.22. And, uh, and when it came to, uh, I guess, the user interface, GNOME at this stage was very mature. It had a lot of uh, spit and polish that was being added to a lot of the preferences and, uh, and admin tools that were part of the GNOME desktop. The only major uh, hiccup that a lot of reviewers had against this distribution was the fact that it really struggled to authenticate against uh, against Windows uh, shared fo uh, shared folders on networks, so like Samba shares and that kind of thing. Um, but apart from that, it was a very mature, well baked uh, desktop. And in a world where most of the Linux desktop was KDE 3.5 back around this time, and especially four years ago when Ubuntu came out, um, GNOME was a wonderful alternative that Ubuntu really championed and it gave a very simple user interface to something that was previously quite looking quite dated and quite complicated. Um, the other fantastic thing that was introduced with Ubuntu Hardy Heron and I would say very instrumental in uh, and for me in particular as uh, as a high schooler starting out in uh, dabbling in Linux um, one of the uh, wow open office 2.4 what a trip yep still looks exactly the same Whatever. Um, but one of the big things that was instrumental in me trying out Ubuntu for the first time was Wubi. Wubi was the uh, was the installer that you would use to install uh, Ubuntu as an application inside Windows. So you would use an installer on Windows uh, that would create kind of a, a kind of a dual boot scenario without having to do any um, risky partitioning or anything like that. It would uh, install it all from a GUI from within Windows, and then it would simply give you the option to uh, to reboot. Um, very similar to kind of how Boot Camp uh, does it in terms of uh, it, you, you don't get any control over the background processes, that's all done for you. All you have to do is press next, 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 and configure uh, how you want the system to install. So Wubi, I think, was very instrumental in uh, in introducing uh, Ubuntu to a, a, to a wider range of, of consumer users like myself back in the day who were just curious about what was out there. So Ubuntu 8.04. Um, the other big defining feature for Ubuntu 8.04 was the fact that uh, this was the first time that they introduced uh, Pulse Audio as the audio backend. Um, and it's hard to believe that that was a whole 10 years ago. 
that uh, that they replaced the the main audio driver in Ubuntu with uh, with Pulse Audio. So, like I said, stable desktop environment, no, GNOME 2.2. Not a whole lot of change that was introduced with this long-term support release, but this was definitely one that put Ubuntu on the map for a lot of consumer users. So now we fast forward to April of 2010, Ubuntu 10.04. This was the release, in my opinion, that made Ubuntu transcend from a very much a geek project that looked very geeky to something that actually could potentially take over or take a mainstream market share. This was the first Ubuntu release that introduced the ambience theme. Uh, and also it was the first release that bumped the window controls over to the left hand side. And boy, howdy, there was some kick up a stink about these changes. Also, it debuted Ubuntu One, which was their cloud, uh, their, was their cloud platform. And uh, and looking over at what this could actually do, it was very early in its stages. In that uh, you could only um, y you would get two gig of of, uh, of cloud storage. But looking at all of the synchronization that could happen, you could sync your bookmarks, you could sync your contacts, you could sync files, obviously, as well as music that you downloaded from the Rhythmbox Music Store. But you could sync your notes through the Tomboy Notes app. There was actually a lot of power and functionality built into this Ubuntu One cloud syncing platform. And I actually used it for quite a while. I was thinking this was the time where Ubuntu could make it mainstream and compete with some of the cloud-based features that were coming out in Mac OS and Windows. Now, in a lot of ways, this release was representative of Ubuntu in a lot of ways uh, reaching peak popularity. And, uh, and when it comes to, uh, I mean, they, they were trying to integrate social media into the desktop. They were trying to push the boundaries in terms of what this OS could do above and beyond uh, what, what, you know, the current offerings of, of Mac OS and, and Windows could do. Um, and, and if you look, when it comes to the actual uh, popularity of Ubuntu in terms of its share on the internet, you can see that it was kind of reaching peak popularity as a search term in Google uh, between sort of 2009 and 2010. And by the time Ubuntu 10.04 10 comes out, it's, uh, that's kind of as popular as it gets before it starts then declining to kind of where it is today. So I think this is a really interesting indicator of uh, and a snapshot of, of time where Ubuntu as a as a Linux distribution was uh, was kind of transcending its its reputation as just another Linux distribution and something that uh, you know something that your average Joe could understand and use. And look at that, OpenOffice still looks exactly the same. So Ubuntu 10.04 always has a special place in my heart and I think was uh, was kind of the, the point at which Ubuntu was as, was at its most popular in terms of uh, in terms of a buzzword in the IT uh, in, the, in the IT world, especially as a desktop focused operating system. And I think as we move on now, we start to notice that that uh, that that focus begins to shift. So now we move on to my personal favorite. Ubuntu release of uh, of all time in uh, in my humble opinion and that was Ubuntu 14.04 for me, this one uh, represented the uh, the most mature version of the Unity desktop, and uh, and just for just for the sake of argument, this was also the first long term support release to have. Uh, it wasn't the first. It was not the first long term support release to use the Unity desktop, but it was the first time that there was actually a decent amount of control given back to the the end user. Um, over the Unity desktop. Prior to this, it, it, it debuted in, I believe, Ubuntu 10.10 .10 as a netbook remix. And then by Ubuntu 11.04, it was the default uh, it was the default desktop environment. And uh, and this was in response to a lot of the changes that was going on with GNOME 3. And they were trying to distance themselves or separate themselves from the pack in terms of providing their own desktop environment and uh, that was going to suit their own goals. Now, the other interesting thing is, is that while the development of, of Ubuntu Unity by Ubuntu 14.04, while it had slowed down, there was a lot of work being put into, uh, being put into Unity 8 and also the Mir uh, display server and other bits and pieces that were kind of showing that the bulk of development going on at Canonical was going into future products that were definitely not desktop 
uh, desktop related. So when it comes to uh, where, I guess, where uh, Ubuntu's focus was shifting to, by this time they had noticed that, uh, that Ubuntu, and, and it was no surprise to them, that Ubuntu was a serious contender in the cloud space. And, uh, and in this very emerging market of, of cloud computing, where uh, deploying Ubuntu on cloud-based uh, on, on cloud infrastructure and on servers was, uh, was really ramping up in popularity. And you can kind of see the shift in focus move from the desktop where, uh, where the development of Unity had slowed down to, and you'll have to excuse the visual effects here, for some reason they're stupid laggy on, uh, on 14.04 inside VirtualBox, but just hang with it. Um, and they had moved a lot of their development from that to focusing on the cloud computing uh, platform that, that Ubuntu was, uh, was really killing the game at. And they were also focusing on mobile convergence. And convergence was a really big buzzword that Ubuntu and Canonical was pushing as they were trying to develop a, a one operating system that could run on TVs. And do you guys remember Ubuntu TV? <laughs> uh, and Ubuntu Mobile and uh, and the desktop and all of that kind of stuff. And that's what Unity 8 was going to represent. And that's what, um, and that's what uh, other technologies like the Mir display server and stuff like that, or Mir uh, was going to enable. Um, sadly, they didn't get there, obviously, because they just didn't pick up the the, the amount of uh, user base that they were hoping for. But still on the desktop side, oh, that's so laggy. Uh, still on the desktop side, they ended up with a very mature environment that had really great uh, integration with a lot of different cloud accounts. This was the first time that, uh, that Ubuntu and the Unity desktop really properly supported high pixel density uh, displays. So everything would scale properly on modern hardware. Uh, sadly, it also marked the removal of Ubuntu One as a service. Uh, and also it continued the grand tradition, which would, uh, which would largely get them a lot of negative press and lose a lot of their core base around the whole Amazon affiliate links and uh, and those being uh, those showing up in the dash now these started coming through I think in Ubuntu 12.04 and it generated a lot of negative buzz for Ubuntu as a desktop and uh, and so by the time we got to 14.04 a lot of uh, a lot of people had found refuge elsewhere but also you got to realize that by the time 2014 was around there was a lot of other Linux distributions out there that were focused Focusing on desktop Linux first and foremost, whereas uh, Ubuntu was spending a lot of R&D in developing these other um, these other alternative platforms, or the ones that were actually bringing, you know, bringing in the bread for the company, which was uh, the cloud-based uh, platforms. So you can kind of see how. Ubuntu's popularity on the desktop led to its popularity uh, eventually, I guess, in the cloud, and uh, and that continues today. Um, and the desktop became less and less of a priority. Um, and I believe 14.04, the long-term support release, was kind of um, the the last release where uh, you could kind of see. Um, Ubuntu's effort going into the, developing the desktop to a stable, mature desktop environment, and you could see it kind of declining to the point now where we are running basically stock GNOME because they discovered that Unity was just not worth the time and effort developing anymore, and uh, and especially since the since the whole reason they were wanting to do it, aka convergence, was not going to happen, and that leads us to Ubuntu 18.10. And now we land in the present day where Ubuntu 18.10 beta. Oh, look, a crash. The Ubuntu 18.10 beta that is uh, the now uh, based on GNOME, based on GNOME shell. There's uh, apart from a default icon set and uh, and some uh, some nice uh, Ubuntu theming. There's not a whole lot else that uh, that is being done to differentiate this particular desktop from the others that are out there. Uh, Amazon affiliates uh, still remains as a as a way to monetize the desktop, but obviously they've figured out a way to kind of uh, please all parties when it comes to privacy settings and uh, and all of that fun stuff. Now, the interesting thing is with Ubuntu 18.10 is that um, definitely the look and feel is going to be getting a bit of an overhaul, what with this brand spanking new icon set, which has been in dire need of updating for quite some time. But I think it's interesting in that Cosmic 
Cuttlefish is uh, this one is going to be based on GNOME 3.30. There's a lot of great new features coming to that in terms of uh, fixing memory leaks and making the desktop run more efficiently altogether, which I think GNOME desperately needed. The theming and the icon set is very, very tight in this release as well. But I, I think in at least to me, this release almost marks the uh, marks a a bit of a and I guess the release before it as well 18.04 marks a release where um, Ubuntu is trying to focus again uh, on it on the desktop and simply providing a GNOME environment that works um, honestly there's there's not a whole lot to dif differentiate Ubuntu anymore and I think this is why a lot of people have found refuge elsewhere in other distributions um, but having said that I mean honestly there's there's not much to I guess fault with Ubuntu's implementation of GNOME, but it's just interesting to see the trajectory of Ubuntu over the years, seeing it move from a uh, seeing it move from a desktop that was focused on the end user running a desktop or a laptop, and see it uh, see the company grow, see it take over uh, cloud computing on a massive scale, see it uh, develop into all sorts of other ventures like convergence and and developing its own projects, all the while, uh, you know, Ubuntu would uh, would often cop criticism for not contributing enough to upstream projects, for uh, for not contributing much to the kernel development of Linux that that it owes a lot of its success to. Um, and the funny thing is that a lot of that still really hasn't changed. While it continues to provide six monthly uh, or half yearly releases every year and a long term support release every two years, um, there, there's not a whole lot of innovation being done here in terms of uh, what it's bringing to the desktop, laptop, uh, end user space. There is still potential for the Ubuntu desktop to, to reach the, uh, the popularity of its former years, but I just don't even know if the model of a release based cycle is relevant anymore where rolling releases are getting so dang good. All right, so this has been my attempt to look at why Ubuntu has become so popular, and uh, and I guess some of the some of the uh, some of the watershed moments in its history over the last ten years or so, or even a bit more than that. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, then uh, definitely drop a like, and uh, if you like this content on a regular basis, then you'll find the subscribe button where it always is unless YouTube is changing things again. Let me know in the comments below, what was your favorite release of Ubuntu of all time? Mine, as I said, 14.04. I'm always curious to hear what you guys think. And what was your first impressions of Ubuntu when you first used it? Well, that'll be all from me, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.